Say hello, PGG, breaking things all. What up, what up, what up, my nigga? Say hello, PGG, breaking things all. This is a Say hello, PGG production. Say hello, PGG, breaking things all. Yeah, yeah. You a hopper fool? Say hello, PGG, breaking things all. Yeah, yeah. Huh. We on. All right, so Say TV Sunday Conversations with Tina, First Lady of Supernatural Lowriders. Okay, so how did you start low riding? Started, uh, actually had always wanted to do it. Uh, was around it as a little girl. Uh, a few uh, individual club members uh, was on my block and a couple of LA superiors and then there was a couple of guys that just had low riders. Uh, but what actually made me get started um, the mailman, rest in peace, Michael Hastings. He's like a second dad to me. And he was he was letting me run my car audio business out of his garage and he decided to build a 66 Impala. So pretty much uh, we're in the garage, you know, I'm putting the music in and everything. So he was like, well, help me build a car. So me and him actually put the car together, put the windows in, put the carpet in, put the interior in and everything. And, I used to ride around with him, and then he introduced me to Rat. And uh, so Rat was like, you know, come up here, and I want you to do the sounds over in Christine in the 59s. So I was like, all right. So I went up there and started working on his cars. I did the 59, then I did the 61, then I did the Cadillac for him. And then he was like, you know what? Do the limo over. We did the sounds in the limo. So then he started throwing me the keys. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, hey. he was like, uh, it don't touch the switch. <laughs> but that was the happening. <laughs> if I'm driving it, I'm touching the switch. That's right, that's right. And so pretty much that was, I always wanted to do it, but that was when I really said, I got to get my own car. Okay. I got to get my own car. So was, what was your first car? My first car was a 65 Impala. Okay. Speak on the, on the car. Pretty much the car. The car was uh, I would say seventy percent done. I had you know frame, suspension, everything done, coils, uh, strokes, and had all the chrome redone, and uh, had the interior done. Only thing I had to do was get the body done, and I gave the information to register the car to this guy. I said, so I'm that close, let me go ahead and register it. I learned from that mistake. Uh, pretty much, I went to register the car, the body came back stolen. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so was that the birth, the uh, beginning of when you got the 66? No. Okay, so what was after the, after that? After the, six, after the 65, I got the Regal. Okay. And then uh, the Regal, uh, when I first bought it out, I was white. Then I took it and uh, had it painted brown with the white top. And uh, rode that one for about, for about probably about seven years, six, seven years. And in the process, I was building a 66 Caprice, which was not the game killer. It was a different one. Oh, okay, okay. I had a green one. Had everything for it, 44 inch moon, everything, but I kept looking at the car going, I don't even like these cars. It was ugly to me, so I, I sold that one. Gave the 44 inch moon to one of my club brothers, Ricky McDaniels. He rests in peace now. You know, it's, it, was, it was a lot of stuff that I had for the car. I just was like, you know what? Let's get rid of this. Here, you can have this, you can have this, you can have this. And, uh, so I'm still rolling the Regal at this time. And then uh, my club brother Tommy, Tommy Baber called me. He used to have Supernatural Accessories. And he was like, hey, my boy got a, a, a 66 over here. I want you to come look at it. So I go look at the car and I was like, I had one of them. I said, but why this one look different to me? I kept looking at it, kept looking at it going, something is different about this car. What it was, the one I had, it it was it was the 
I think it probably was a base model. It didn't have any chrome on it. Just the wheel wheels and around the window. And this one, it had the extra chrome on the front, the extra, you know, the chrome for the vinyl, it had the rockers, you know, all of that stuff. You know, I had to get everything redone on it, but right. I think that's what really caught my eye was the chrome made the car jump out to me more. So I ended up with the Game Killer and finished it and fell in love with it. Right, right. And uh, I, would, I would say that uh, with that car that you built, uh, you you you've gained a lot of respect Thank on the streets, and especially for me, because you low ride hard to me. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. And, um, and thank you, know, you to everybody. You know, I just want to put that out there. I know you. I know you're a uh, the women that low ride. You know, they look at you differently. You know, to me, okay. But um, supernaturals. What makes Supernatural Car Club different from other clubs? You know, I was around a lot of different clubs before I became Supernatural because, I, like I said, I was doing everybody's audio. So I was around the Majestics, I was around, uh, you know, some of the original riders, and that's because I grew up with uh, some of them and, and some of the individuals. And it was something when I would be up there working on Rad's cars every day. All of these dudes was just together and it was always just a party and fun and laughing and joking. And that's what I didn't see with a lot of the other clubs I was around. And that is actually what really attracted me to come to the club. I mean, the mailman, he was some Majestics when I was riding around with him. And he had a small little incident in the club, so he left the club and he went Supernaturals. So, um... Basically, he did bring me into the club, but what really, really drew me to the club was the the unity and the closeness, and it you know, and it was black and brown. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, with that being said, you said you guys are all close. Uh, what other clubs do you have close relationships with? Um, PE and individuals. Um, you know, we did, I deal with a lot of the Majestics, uh, Chinaman, D-Mac, you know, when I see Gangster, you know, we holler, but, um, the closest ones to us is, uh, individuals and, and PE. Okay, alright. Um, I do this little thing called name dropping, so I'm gonna drop a couple of names on you and just give me a little feedback, uh, from your experience. And this is my partner right here. OG Duck Ghetto Boys, rest in peace. You know, Duck, yeah, he was Ghetto Boys, but he gonna forever be supernatural to me. That was my brother, you know. It, it was a small little incident why he ended up not in the club anymore, but, you know, that ain't important. But Duck is always <clears throat> gonna be supernatural to me. Okay. Now, when I first came out, um, it was... I didn't see too many females. I met you. You Supernaturals was one of the first clubs I was dealing with. Supernaturals in city to city, but I did see one other female out there tipping. Speak on Bridget Compton Finest. Oh yeah, Bridget. You know she uh, she did her thing. You know I wish she'd get back out there. She she shut down. But when she came out there with that big body, she did that. And when she put that on that back window, I started this pink shit. She really did. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so um, you spoke on Big Rat. Big Rat, give me a little feedback on your relationship with Big Rat. Big Rat is like my big brother. We argue, we fight, we get mad at each other, we make up, we drink. We eat, you know, it's like literally like a blood brother, you know, the way our relationship is and I wouldn't change it for nothing. You know, it's like I tell him all the time, if you don't call me and cuss me out at least once a day, my day don't go right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I was talking to, I don't know if you've seen my interview with Gangster, but he had put out there a couple of points like, uh... It's a show on the streets, and I only see a couple of car clubs come through, and when they come through, 
they come through hitting the switch. And I'm, Supernaturals is one of them clubs. They come through and they show out. So speak on hitting the switch and some of these clubs that's just come through. But you know what my thing is, and, and this is just my opinion. If you build a lowrider and you don't know how to hit your switch, how dedicated are you to the game? You know, my thing is, is any craft that I get into, I try to master it. So for me, when I come through on the switch, I don't care if I break the car. It might, like Rat say, might cost you a little, might cost you a lot, but it's going to cost you. So whatever it's going to cost me. You know, um, and like you said, I mean, there's, there's some clubs they come through and they drive through. And you got some that come through and they in the air. I mean, it's cool. You can, you know, lay and play, seesaw, all of that. But once you really learned your craft, you're going to bring that car up off the ground. Right, right. So speak on uh, being a female, and I would say this is a male-dominated thing, low riding. Speak on uh, being a female, doing what you do in this lifestyle. You know what? Um, I listen to some of the females talk, and, and some of them feel like they don't get the respect that they, they feel like they should get. I've never ever experienced that, you know. It, you know, from day one when I came into this, I don't know if it was because I was dealing with the guys with their sounds already, and they, you know, just, you know, flocked to me and and just showed me my respect and gave me my love, you know. And uh, Switchman, uh, Switchman was one of them. He gave me uh, he gave me some hobby lessons, and he'll tell you. It took me about two minutes to learn how to hop my car off the ground in the air with the Regal. Okay. He was like, that's crazy. <laughs> so that leads me to think, uh, to speak on, um, could you speak on hitting your own switch versus something that's my else hitting your switch? Hey, uh, well, you know what? Uh, me, like I said, I've let other people touch the car, but for is you know, hitting your own switch, I mean, to me, you're not going to enjoy the car till you really fully in, incline with the car. You know, you and the car got to be one to make it happen. If you can't make it happen, then you got to let somebody else hit your switch. That's kind of like to me being a cheerleader on the side. <laughs> right, right. That's just my opinion. Right. Nobody else's, you know. Okay. So, what what year did you did you start when you first got your car? Um, I well, I started building that that sixty five in ninety five. Okay. And it was around ninety seven when 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 everything just went left and I ended up selling everything and that's when I bought the Regal. So I came out at the end of ninety seven. Okay. So where did you ever was Terminal Island open back then? Terminal Island? Uh, uh you know what? When I was in Terminal Island I used to be in, I was in a uh, a two hundred SX club. Okay. Called Limited Edition. You know, so I used to be out there in that and even when I was hanging with the supernaturals that's what I was in. I was rolling my 200 SX for a minute. And uh, so I didn't really get to do the Terminal Island thing. Okay, okay. You know, for his low riding. Okay. Um, 90s, but you were low riding in the 90s. Yeah. Okay, so speak on low riding in the 90s versus today. The 90s was the fun, fun time. The police, you know, Crenshaw. Crenshaw, the way it is, Crenshaw now is 39th Street. When we was out there, Crenshaw was from Imperial to Adams all day, like this. It was nonstop. It was, you know, you stopped on the wall, you hung out on the wall for a minute. You, you know, we had the different stops, but we actually cruised from Imperial to Adams. And uh, I think it was just really the neighborhood right there where the wall is, and all they start complaining about the traffic. They can't get home from church, and, right, you right. know. And I think that's what really kind of changed the dynamics of Crenshaw Boulevard, you know. Even though it's it's always gonna be legendary to us, right? You know, right. That changed the dynamics of it. 
Okay, so, um, what's new that you have coming? I'm building a 61 and a 64. Oh, you got a 4 too? Yeah. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Um, last year I seen you at the, uh, Ladies of low riding, I didn't attend, but I, I seen you. Uh, they kind of, I think they honored you. They gave you a a trophy or a plaque or something like that. Yeah, it was a legendary trophy. Yeah, actually that day I I had another uh, previous engagement that I had, you know, uh, took and a while before that, so I didn't get to stay for the whole thing. I ended up going to do. A uh, music video with Yo Yo. Oh, okay. Or out of control video. Okay, we're doing big things. We're doing big things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see. Um, I don't know. That's basically it. Uh, any last words? Uh, last words. Yeah, I want to thank. Said TV, you always keep it one hundred. You always been with the Supernaturals from your day one, you know, uh, and we appreciate that. Um, you know, I, like I said, uh, all the guys out there, I appreciate the way y'all embrace me and let me in into low riding and and you know with you know no problems, no hate, you know. And if it is something out there, I don't know nothing about it, you know, right. for none of the guys, you know, they all been good. The females. Out there that ride, keep doing your thing, you know, let's master this craft because pretty much we 1% of this, you know, and we got, we got to actually stand up for us and, and let them know that, you know, we can do the same things that they can do. But, um, you know, it's not even like trying to dominate a male dominated hobby, you right. know, it's just, you know, we can do it too. Just give us give give us our one percent. We gonna be the one percenters. <laughs> that's right. That's right. All right. So I would say uh, you are most respected. I never have never heard any illness towards you personally. All every, everything that I always hear has always been good. You support people, uh, and you know you just you're a hundred percent. 100% hater free person in, in oh, my yeah. opinion okay exactly. so appreciate you for uh, taking the time out with said TV Sunday conversation said TV all day all day said low key TV breaking news all what up what up what up my nigga said low key TV breaking news all this is a said low key TV production said low key TV breaking news all yeah yeah Stay low, PTV, breaking fools off. Yeah, yeah, cut. We